gotta love that song. And you know, that song has more meaning than many of us. It's not just a song to sing, but it's a song to apply. And being a servant goes way beyond just coming to church. You know, I know I'm kind of direct, but it's more than just coming to church. It's getting involved, coming up with ideas, help execute those ideas. There's a lot to being a servant. And we're not doing it for an individual. Like you're not doing it for the pastor. Or I'm not doing it for me. The things we do is for Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be a servant to Jesus Christ. Which brings me to Joshua. Uh, you elegantly read those verses. And um, there's a lot, a lot there when you get you got to put yourself in joshua's shoes joshua is about a hundred years old he dies when he's 110 that's what the scriptures tell us towards the end of chapter 24 so he feels that the time has come that he needs to bring all those leaders together and through them they will spread that out to the 300 or so at the time Jews that are there in the promised land. Very important. And he, you know, I kind of, I kind of uh, admire him. He reminds me of Paul. He reminds me of Christ. He reminds me of Moses. He just gets to the point. You know, you got to love people get to the point. So I'll try to stay on the point. Okay. So, but, but they do. The message isn't more than, oh, it didn't feel good to me today. It's the message that he's delivering that is all important. And obviously he has concerns. And we know that to be true because many years later, what happens to Israel? They're scattered. Why? For the very things that they said, we'll continue. Keep Lord what? Number two? No, number one. Judea, many years later, after Israel was scattered, what happened to them? Oh, it's a, a free trip to Babylon for 70 years, right? Why? Because the things that they said they would continue to do and serve the Lord fell away. So, you know, but at this time, you know, they had defeated their enemies. And, you know, the, the, Am the Ammonites are the ones that is the land they're occupying here. And the Lord was pretty clear in the areas that you uh, <laughs> brought to us very well, is that God made it clear through Joshua, hey, y'all didn't do this. I allowed this to happen. I allowed you to defeat. Oh, by the way, all these cities that you now enjoy, you didn't build those. I allowed you to obtain them. That's really not any different than our lives. What's going on there applies to a day as well. I'm not, I haven't always been the person that stands up here before you today. And I haven't always been motivated to do what I do here today. But like Joshua said, after he went through all that, he says, you know, make a decision on who you're going to serve. And once you make that decision, stick with it. Go with it. Does that mean everything will be smooth? No, I can I can tell you that from experience. Richard can tell you that from experience. Jim can tell you that from experience. But we always get through it. Why? Because we made a covenant, an agreement, unbreakable agreement to serve. 
not just to serve anybody, but to serve the Lord. And that's so important. That's important for each and every one of us. Now, during Joshua's time, you know, they defeated their enemies. They claimed the process, I mean, the promised land. They, they uh, divided it up between the 12 tribes of Israel. You know, they settled down. Man, they were enjoying life. This is all good. Even though it was a joyful time, it was also a very dangerous time for them as well. And this is what Joshua is trying to get over to them. Don't forget where you came from. Well, obviously, we know in their case, they did forget where they came from. That's why Israel was scattered by the Assyrians and Judea was taken into captivity by the Babylonians. But God made a covenant with the Israelites, didn't he? <laughs> and we saw it fulfilled in 1948. That covenant that prophecy was fulfilled in 1948. So, you know, how they had gotten to where they are. Don't forget how, how you got to where you are. And that's true for us today. What the Lord has done for them. You know, when things are going, <laughs> I always bring this up to my people that, that I'm uh, in charge of taking care of and so on during the course of my other life. And I know many of you can relate to that too. But don't forget what the Lord has done for us. And I speak pretty openly about that. You know, we're blessed. We are. There are people who are not blessed the way we are blessed. But sometimes we forget that. It's easy when everything is going great and say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in there, Lord. I'm, 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 I want to serve. But then that rough patch comes in. And how often people, me included, tend to forget. Joshua is saying, don't forget. And I think he's telling us, don't forget. Don't forget. Be careful about do adopting other gods. In our world, other gods can be money. And mercy, we see what money can do. Money itself isn't a sin. But when you start worshiping it, it becomes a serious sin. And how you use it. There's a lot of productive, I know a lot of people who have money. I'm not that person, but I know a lot of people who have money and they use it in very productive ways. I also, and you all seen it too, there's a lot of people who have lots of money who don't use it in so productive ways. Josh is saying, you know, don't go there. Don't give there. It could be power. Power is an idol. What do you worship? People worship power. You know, in my own personal situation, the person I work directly for worked for directly for me for 10 years. Do I care? Not a lick. We're all in it for the same reason. And just like I needed his support, I give him my support. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Joshua, he's concerned about everybody getting complacent. And obviously they got complacent. Or they wouldn't have ended up years later in what I've said a couple of times. We can't get complacent. It's easy to get complacent, particularly when things are going well. But as soon as we get complacent, what tends to happen to with humans? Yeah. 
you know, that it goes on a slide and, and everybody's looking at everybody going, well, what happened? It wasn't me, you know? Oh, it must be me. But that's humans. You know, I often wonder how um, patient God must really be. I mean, his patience was tested, and that's one of the reasons the scriptures tell us that humans live really no more than 120 years. That is scriptural, by the way. So, and I can see why he didn't allow people to live 900 years, 800 years, because how would you, how would we like to deal with that for so long and the amount of patience it would take? But one thing I can say for him is he never gives up on us. That is a blessing. Why? Because he promised he would never. That's another word, by the way. Just throwing that out. Uh, that's another word that describes his commitment to us. And Joshua is warning the people back then, and, and, and it applies to us today, don't become complacent. Don't become complacent. Another unique situation that uh, the Jews had and all around them were people who worship other gods. And he's, that concerns him. In fact, Abraham's father, Terah, and his brother, Nahor, they worshiped other gods. And, and the scriptures refer to it as on the other side of the river or the over there on the other side of Euphrates, right? And God reminds them that he took, took Abraham out of there and brought him to show him what was coming and made a serious agreement with him that he would be the father of the Jewish nation. But before he was a Jew, what was he? A Gentile. He was Abram as a Gentile, Abraham as a Jew. Sometimes we don't recognize that. So that's good, though, because we are considered what? Gentiles. And he cares for us just as much as he cares for his, his chosen people. So we can't be these things either. This message is clearly, in my opinion, for us and me personally, for me, as it was in Joshua's time, to the Israel nation. Joshua's command to the people was threefold. The first one was they were commanded to fear God. And you know, that's a kind of a loaded question for a lot of people. And I respect God. I don't fear God, but I can news for you. I fear God. Not because he's going to spank me. Now, that doesn't mean he can't spank me because he, we know through the scriptures he has spanked a lot of people. And he's going to spank a lot of people as time goes on. But it's because he loves them. Some people just, have you, I know you, Paul, never experienced it, but you probably never come across anybody that needs a little tough love. You know, they just, yeah, sure, uh-huh. If you do, I'd like to talk to you about those experiences because that would be a new one for me. I've never, you know, I've, I've experienced a lot of people where you sometimes you just gotta set, set your foot down. And we know from the scriptures, God has set his foot down on several occasions. I would more likely many occasions, but it's because he never gave up on us and he gives us what we need at the moment in time we need it. But the fear of God, what is that? We need 
to reverence and honor him for who he is. We need to, you know, reverence and honor him for who he is. He's not one of those gods. He is the God. The Godhead is made up of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when we reference God, we really reference all three. But there is the Father, and we know that's true, because who did Jesus pray to when he was here on the earth? The Father. Who did Jesus rely on when he was here on the earth? The Holy Spirit. But they all work together. Genesis tells us that they were here in the beginning. It's no accident that we're here. There is a, a plan. The other thing of this, this threefold command, was to put away your gods. You know, those things in our lives that come ahead of the Lord need to be put away forever. The Lord should always come first. And if the Lord comes first, and I had to learn this the hard way myself, but when I put, started putting the Lord first, my life became a lot simpler because I was never alone. And we're never alone anyway because we know the Holy Spirit's always there. The only one that pushes the Holy Spirit out is who? Us. But he's always ready to come back. Put away other gods. Keep our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his Father and the Holy Spirit, uno number one. Keep God first in your lives. And it's amazing how much difference it makes us feel in what we call the heart. And when we say the heart, we're not talking about the, the pump here. We're talking about the heart, our spirit inside us and oh by the way when jesus does appear in the cloud someday he will look down and the scriptures tell us in first thessalonians that he's going to look down through our head through our mind and into our heart and lip service will not get us to where we want to go i've said this not just in this congregation but i've said it in many others on the if if that happens on a Sunday morning, there's going to be a lot of people looking at each other that are still here. And there's going to be a lot of ministers, and I'm not just talking about here, because I believe we are all got the right heart. However, we're talking about Christians as a whole on a Sunday morning. There's going to be a lot of people who are standing up here are going to go, what just happened? Because a lot of times we come to church for the wrong reasons. And there's only one reason. You've heard me say this before. The only reason we come to church is to worship Christ. If we come for any other reason, we're doing it for the wrong reason. If I'm up here speaking to you, I'm not doing it because I have to. I'm doing it because I'm called to. Not because there's a lot of people in in this position, they're going to be looking at each other saying, what just happened? Because they did it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, they know the knowledge and everything, but they're not doing it for Christ because they're doing it for other gods, like money, power, position, wrong reasons. But that applies to all of us in all of our lives. So Joshua challenges the people to choose who they will serve and get about it. Same choice stands before us as individuals. I kind of like this phrase here. It's about time people got off the fence 
and made up their minds whose team they're going to be on. From my point of view, there's only one team to be on. One. No other. But watch TV and try to convince yourself everybody is. I'm not convinced. We cannot have both God and the world. That doesn't mean we can't enjoy things around us and so on. But we should never worship the things around us. The only thing, the only person we should worship is God. If the other ones, the, all, the, all the world does is create distractions for us. And this was a fear that Joshua had. Because it can become a demise of a good situation that we're in. We want to keep that good situation in play. Is the Lord your choice this morning? That's a rhetorical. <laughs> That's a rhetorical question. Does he have to compete for our time? From my perspective, the answer is no. He should never have to compete for our time. Our attention. Again, I don't believe he should ever have to compete for our attention. Our money. I don't believe he should have to compete for that either. Our love. Definitely shouldn't have to compete for that one. Because he loves us, not because he has to. It's definitely because he wants to. We, got, we get no greater love than what comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why they never give up on us. But should he have to compete for our love? Hmm, something to think about. In my note here, I put, if he does, it calls our whole being into question. And, you know, we have to remember that he's not the one creating that question. The only ones that create that question are humans, are people. The question I always have is, why, why? Well, I'm guilty at points in my life. I, I was raised in this church, got baptized when I was eight, however, when I was 32, I was born again. In other words, I always call it my baptism actually took place when I was 32. And from then on, whew, it's been a whirlwind. But I've enjoyed the ride. And has every situation been comfortable? No, but it's been a learning experience. And the more I learned, the more my personal fears begin to reside and that's true for all of us but who do i have to place first who do we have to place first in our life and that's jesus that's god and jo joshua he was pressing this with the gathering and said so they would go out but how quickly how quickly they tended to forget Joshua made the, the statement that, you know, whatever decision you all make, he's talking to the, all the faith places, I'll tell you what mine is. I and my house will continue to serve the Lord. And I submit to you, that's what applies to us as well. That's what we should do. And that's what God wants us to do. I know it's scary. Been there. But that's the way I look at it. I'm still here. We can get through that. But do I have to make some choices on what's important and what's not? Sure did. Did I have to use the word not today or no? 
with the fear of hurting somebody's feelings? No. But who am I serving? I am serving the Lord. If I'm serving the Lord, I'm serving his flock. If you're serving the Lord, you're serving the flock. We take care of each other. We grow our strength within each other. And God blesses us. He does. God bless you all. I love you all. And uh, enjoy the turkey after this, this service. <laughs>